So under here I have my dual Xeon powered motherboard. Now this is a server board which is why it's sitting on top of the other PCs because I just do not have a case that can fit it. But if we just go back to the, if we go just to sort of look at the back of the board there you can see it's got the two CPUs with the two coolers on them. They're Intel CPU coolers and the fans spin insanely quickly in order to keep the Xeons cool because Xeons don't tend to do, sort of, certainly this generation, don't do the sort of power saving that modern sort of i7s and consumer CPUs do because they don't really need to. But also, as you might be able to see, all the RAM and everything's all in one line. So the air travels from the fans across and down to blow the air over everything that could get hot. And that also applies to the Northbridge heatsink there. And I've got a bit of glass on top, so to direct the air like it would if there was a sort of the lid of a case on top of it. Um, so also what we've got here is an ATI 5570, which is also insanely noisy due to that appalling heatsink design. Um, so that's just providing the graphics front end. Then we've got two PCI-X slots, which are the white ones, and can't remember what the black ones are. Um, but I don't have any PCI-X things. Then we've got the power switch here, which is these two wires. And then a whole array of SATA connectors, one of which is connecting to a hard drive, just sitting on top of the thin clients there. Um, in the front, we've got four USB ports, the sound, um, uh, the dual gigabit LAN. There's a serial port there, and then just PS slash 2. There's eight gig of fully buffered DIMM RAM in, uh, for this. Um, so it's just quite powerful, but when I switch it on now, you'll begin to realise this thing gets pretty darn loud. Right, so that's clearly starting up now. And this has obviously got indicator LEDs down there, as you can see, which cycle to let you know what's wrong. Because obviously if this is in a server case, you won't necessarily have a mouse and keyboard and all that available to hook it up to play around for ages. I'll just flip over to the screen in a sec so we can see what this thing's displaying and maybe have a look in the BIOS. This is what you get when you when the thing starts up. So you go, it's entering setup now. So this is what the BIOS setup utility looks like. Actio setup utility, blah blah blah. Uh, so there you can see the relevant board information. This has got two Z on E5. 30s in it, 8 gig of RAM as I said, and you can set the date and everything else there. But I'm I'm more interested in some of the more advanced features we have. So you see you've got processor configuration, all the usual settings there. Memory, you see it's got eight DIMMs in it. This supports up to 32 gig, and so on. Security. This has got a TPM module in it as well, which has surprised me. And I guess all the usual boot options, boot manager and all the other stuff. So let's just get out of that. And once again it will take quite a long time to cycle on and off because it has to do all the power on self tests and all the RAM stuff. What I would say is it is very, very picky. Um, if one RAM stick is not in the right configuration, sort of as in like dual channel, the whole thing will kick a wobbly and just refuse to start at all. Um, but then I guess that's the server environment. These are designed to be ultra reliable, so they just they won't start up if it's going to cause a problem. So um, yeah, you can see here just how long it takes. Because normally when you switch a computer, it's basically almost instantly at the splash screen. And you see there you go Intel server board, and even ones here it does you know sit for a short period of time before then progressing on. This has got Windows 7 on it currently, so you can see starting Windows. It won't be instantaneous because this is just a bog standard mechanical SATA hard drive. Um, so, yeah. Obviously, by using SSD, this thing would be blazingly fast. I mean, having eight real CPU cores rather than having four and then four hyper threaded means this really is quite a beast. Quite a noisy beast as well. I don't know why it's taking so long now. Just go under here, so you can hear it again. And that's, this isn't even with the fans spinning at max, I mean... Right, it's ringing again. So let's insert my password. There we go. Oh crap. 
What's that? So I've got a GTX 650 arriving for this so I can turn it into a bit of a gaming PC and I'll have to do another video for that. But yes, you can see it's working absolutely fine. Um, I haven't, I'll just bring up the Windows Experience Index thing for it. I have Geekbench there. And again, it's just scored very, very well. Not quite as well as my i7-3770K. But that's not too surprising. There you go, 7.7 .7 for CPU and RAM. Um, that indicates, you know, my i7 scores 7.8. So only one point, point, 0 0.1 points higher. So for 50 quid, this motherboard, and obviously for that price, included the RAM, and CPUs and everything. And, well, I've just the RAM and the motherboard and the CPU. This thing was very, very good value for money. I don't worry about the graphics card scores, that's just because when I did this test, the drivers were not installed, which is what's coming up with that. But yeah, as you can see, a very, very stellar board. I'm going to have a lot of fun with this.